Hey guys, it's Kirsten from Roots and Wildflowers and today we're going to be talking about growing seeds indoors. So I'm going to walk you through the small greenhouse that I got. It's really a, I'm going to say, low budget one. I think it was $43 at Lowe's Canadian. Um, it's not that big. It has one, two, three, four, five shelves on it, maybe four. And it's about the size of like an actual seed tray, like a 72 cell seed tray. So it's not super wide, it's not very big. It has a plastic cover for it and I'm gonna walk you through how I build it. I built it this morning. It literally took me, I think, between five to 10 minutes. Aside from the top piece kept coming out so I had to fiddle with that. But otherwise it was very easy. Not that many pieces. You could build it with your kids if you wanted to for a fun activity or if you're doing it by yourself, it's an easy one person job. So I picked this one just because it's lightweight and small and I'm gonna put it upstairs in our mud room that can be transferred out to the deck that's off of that just to harden the seeds off. So hardening your seeds off is taking them outside for short periods of time at the beginning of the season when it's not cold, like not below zero, just to get them used to that outdoor temperature aside from your indoor temperature where your house is probably like 21 degrees. We want to get getting used to the colder temps, the wind, things like that. A lot of people don't harden off their seeds and then they can actually end up dying. So this is why I got this one so I could easily just transport the seeds outside when I wanted to. Uh, another feature about this is I am going to add lights to it and I'll show you those in a second. And I did get a heating tray just to get germination going, but I'll get into that in a minute. First, I'm gonna show you how fast and easy it was to actually build this little greenhouse. So I'm gonna play that now. So here is the greenhouse up close. You can see it's a plastic film on top. The only piece that gave me a really hard time building was actually this one up here. It just won't stay in. As you can see, it's popped up. But I've got enough room for a regular tray. And then the rest of them, I'm just going to do a mix and match of different types of containers. So I'll show you those in a minute. But it fits a standard, I believe that's a 72 cell tray. And it's not that tall, but honestly, for the four shelves, it'll get the job done. So I think this is great. Now that you've seen how easy it is to actually build the small greenhouse, I'm going to show you the other things that I bought for starting my seeds indoors and how I'm going to use them. So first up, I'm going to show you, I got a big Hex 72 tray. This comes with a bottom tray, the actual cells, and then a uh, top for like... The moisture so you do have like your greenhouse uh, effect even though that is a small greenhouse this is good if you're starting seeds indoors just to get that humidity going so I got this this is Mackenzie it's probably at Walmart Lowe's your Canadian Tire all that stuff this is where I got that from and then I did grab these little like compostable uh, jiffy pots I think they're three inch I'm not sure what size these are. Specifically, I got these for starting tomatoes and peppers because I don't want to have to keep transplanting those out inside. I want to make sure that we have a pretty big container to start with. I'm not going to be starting my tomatoes and peppers in these hex trays just because I know I'm going to have to move them quickly. They're going to grow. And these are going to be the things that are inside the longest. They're going to take the longest that I'm going to start them, I think, eight weeks out before I want to transplant them into the garden. So they need room to grow. If these don't work out, I'm honestly just going to use red solo cups. I have family members that do it that way. It's also inexpensive. We have some in the house. So that's an easy, cheap, inexpensive way. I have heard people have problems with um, their plants drying out with these just because the cardboard does soak up or this like compostable material does tend to soak up the water. So we'll see. I'm going to start them with these. If it doesn't work, like I said, I'll just switch to red solo cups. I also did, I've been saving my egg cartons as well. A lot of people use egg cartons to grow seeds in. So this is another material that's very similar to this. You can just save these up that you have at home and they make great sizes. Look at the little. So a really easy, cheap, inexpensive item that you already probably have in your recycling bin, you get to repurpose it. And then otherwise, another one, I'm just keeping everything that I can. 
I'm gonna use yogurt containers. With these, I might drill a hole in the bottom of them or poke a hole in the bottom just for drainage. But for bigger plants, um, if I need to transplant things out, I've kept a couple of these yogurt containers that I can transfer them into and put them in here. It's essentially the same as a gardening pot. Um, it's plastic, so it doesn't really matter. So I've kept a couple of these as well. You could also probably use like ice cream bins, like you name it, anything that your food came in that is not gonna leak essentially, but you could drill a hole for drainage because it is best to bottom water seedlings. Um, this would be your best bet. So if you don't wanna spend money on actual seed trees, here's your options. The other thing that I'm going to do this year is I did get a heat mat. A lot of the videos that I've been watching myself say that heat mats are really important for germination. Those first, I believe like five to seven days when things are really gonna start to sprout. Um, so I'm going to be using heat tray on things that first week or maybe the first two weeks just to see how it goes. I just, again, got this from Lowe's. I'm not sure how much this one costs, but I'll put it in the description if I can figure it out. So this one is just 10 by 20 and it's good for, like I said, seedlings. So we're going to try this one out, see if it gives us some better results. I might do an experiment, do some seedlings without the heat tray and then others with it and see which do better. So again, you don't have to get that, but if you do have like a colder home where it's gonna be harder to get that germination right up, that might be a good idea. So if I was starting them in the basement here, 100% I would be using one because it is chillier down here than it is upstairs. But because I'm gonna be putting this in a room that does get direct sunlight, I'm not as worried, but I still wanna try it as an experiment. And then the last thing I got was these LED glow, grow lights. Um, I'm not gonna use, so it shows you like it's got these stands. I already tested it out in the greenhouse. They're too tall, so I'm not gonna keep them on this. I think I'm just gonna go buy some like S hooks and chains and kind of hang them from the top of the greenhouse. Something that I can lower it because you always want your lights just a couple inches above your actual, the top growth of your seedlings. So I am gonna try this. I have three of them for the three bottom shelves. The top one I'm not as worried about because it's going to be against a I don't know if it's south facing. I think it's a east facing door. So we'll see if it gets enough light. If not, I'll go back and grab another one of these. But I am gonna hang these and try and make a pulley system that I can kind of move them up and down as the plants grow. That's another thing, like if it's fixed, you're gonna start to run out of room once your plants start to grow, your seedlings are starting to get taller. So I'm gonna try these. And then I also just have like a plug that I can plug multiple in. And something that I'm going to dig out of our Christmas decorations is the timer that we use for our Christmas tree so I can set it that the lights will be on between like, I think at the beginning you need 12 to 16 hours. So instead of having to flip them on myself, I can just have it that they're set, they turn on at like 6 a.m. and turn off at 6 p.m. So I think that's what I'm gonna do for that setup. Uh, if I do actually get the, the greenhouse set up upstairs where it's supposed to be with the lights, I will plug it into the end of this video and show you in this one. If not, and I don't get all the materials by the time I post this, I will show you in a later video when I actually do my seed starting. I'm going to be doing my trays this week because it's the beginning of April. And although my frost date is actually considered, I think like around May 20th, like I said before, most people don't plant out here in Southern Ontario until it's around like... May long weekend, May long weekend, but I'm gonna actually go and be safe and go with June 1st as my frost date. I'm making that up myself just because I know we just got snow here last week. It's been really cold again. We've got a cold snap and I don't want to plant things out too early that they just end up being like fried by the frost. So just to be safe, I'm going with June 1st. I may plant things out a little bit earlier, but my goal with my gardening schedule, what I'm going with for those weeks to go off of my little seed box that I organized is starting June 1st. So now that we're at the beginning of April, I can start planning out my eight week plants. So I'm going to be doing my tomatoes this week and I might be doing some flowers. So I will do a video on how I mix my soil, what I'm using, and then actually putting it into the trays and planting some stuff with you guys. So that will be later this week, but this is my indoor startup for now. And Again, I know you guys are probably going, why, why did she pick such a small, like, little indoor greenhouse? 
because the plan is later this summer to actually put an extension off of one of our sheds and make an actual greenhouse, like build out a poly or like with used windows. We're not 100% sure which way we're gonna do it yet, but I'm gonna be building that later on the season. So I will definitely record that and walk you guys through that process with me. But for now, this little indoor one will do. It was a cheap option. It didn't take up a lot of space and it was the best thing for what I needed for this year, just being in my second year of gardening. So. I hope that explains it. If you have any questions about greenhouses or you have a really cool setup for indoor growing that you'd like to share with everyone, comment below. Make sure to subscribe so you can see my next seed starting video and what we're gonna do in the garden this year. And I hope that you guys have a great day. See you later.